gonna work. Oh no! Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Alright, redo it. Go again. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? In today's video, we're talking about the Trackhawk and why it's worth every single penny. But before we get into today's video, I just want to thank the new subscribers. You guys are amazing. We're coming up on 2,000 subscribers. I never thought I'd be here, and I wouldn't without you guys. So thank you. Lindsay and I are up in Terryall Reservoir. This is the first Saturday that we've both had off together in a while, so we decided to drive up to Terryall Reservoir. She didn't know where we were going. And the Jeep made it up here in the snow just fine. Before we determine whether or not the Trackhawk is worth it, we gotta look at the differences. The SRT retails for about $67,000. And the Trackhawk retails for about 87. New, new, base model, base model comparison. So before we determine whether or not the Trackhawk's worth it, you gotta look at the differences. The SRT is $67,000 new, and the Trackhawk is $87,000 new. So you're looking at about a $20,000 price difference. It's about 230 horsepower more than the SRT, and about 170 foot-pounds of torque more than the SRT. You've got $20,000 to play with in order to make up that power difference. Literally everything on the Trackhawk is an upgraded version of what's on the SRT. Everything from the engine, transmission, transfer case, differentials, axles, drive shaft, brakes, the whole nine yards. Right, babe? All right. Everybody say hi to Lindsay. Lindsay, say hi, YouTube. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> the best way to make up that kind of power difference is with a supercharger or a procharger, or I've seen some custom rear-mounted turbo kits or just custom turbo kits in general. Now, those kits cost about six to $9,000, and they include everything from the supercharger and the turbo or the procharger to the intercooler, the fuel system, the tuning, everything that you need in order to make the SRT forced induction. That being said, we are at six to $9,000 on the difference of the $20,000 difference. So we're almost halfway there, right? A third to halfway of the price difference. Now, that doesn't include the forged motor. And the forged motor is basically just a stronger engine that is built to take the 11 and a half pounds of boost that the Trackhawk comes with from the factory. When you're talking about adding boost to the SRT, you have to think about reliability. That is one of the huge issues with adding that much power. Now, the failure point in the SRT motor is the lifters. The lifters fail and then they flatten out the cam lobes and basically you just need a motor at that point. Is it 12? No, 11,000. Damn it. I'm trying to do math on, on camera. <laughs> You're looking at a difference of between 11 to 14,000, depending on which kit you go with. And then you add the 5,000 for the forged rotating assembly. All of a sudden you're at 16 to 19 thousand dollars there's your difference right there makes sense to me on top of that it's got a beefed up transmission and the upgraded transmission for the srt to be able to hold up to the 700 horsepower and 675 foot pounds of torque that you're aiming for in order to make up that difference that's another nine thousand dollars We've already gotten all the way up to $27,000 just in upgrades between the engine and the transmission. That doesn't include the brakes, the transfer case, the rear differential, or any of that stuff. The axles, the drive shaft. We can move on to the more technical stuff that isn't necessarily related, but you get an extended warranty when you buy the Trackhawk. It's the same extended warranty as the SRT which is three years, 36,000 miles on the basic warranty coverage, or five years, 60,000 miles on the powertrain. 
I don't know about you guys, but I'd much rather save my money, spend it on the difference, and be able to drop it off at the dealership if something happens. You've got your warranty, you've got your peace of mind, and you know for a fact that if there's any sort of mechanical failure, you're not gonna be paying out of pocket for it because if it's modified, guess what? Your warranty's void. What was that, babe? You're screwed. <laughs> yes, basically, <laughs> if anything breaks on a modified SRT, you're screwed. Now that you have kind of an idea of how much money is involved to bring the SRT up to the Trackhawk power levels, to make it faster, or to make it as fast, if not faster than the Trackhawk, you gotta think about labor to install. If you're not doing it yourself, and you're gonna have a shop do it, they're gonna charge you about $120 an hour at probably 20 hours if you're not rebuilding the motor, just in labor to bring all of that other stuff up to the track arc power levels. When you take all of that stuff into consideration, a 707 horsepower, 675 foot-pounds of torque SUV, the world's fastest SUV, at under $100,000, how can you not justify that? The vehicles that they compare the Trackhawk to are the Lamborghini Urus, the Porsche Cayenne Twin Turbo V8, the Mercedes whatever the hell it is, uh, the BMW X5, which I think has really bad transmission problems, and you're buying a European vehicle. It's an American-made vehicle. And I can tell you this, the quality that they put into the Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT and the Trackhawk is like 10 times better than any of their like base model stuff. It's pretty easy to justify. In my opinion, I think the Trackhawk is worth every single penny. The difference is two million pennies, about, to be almost exact. It's really pretty up here. Oh, and in other news, you guys are ridiculous with all the drama in the Dodge community on YouTube. Holy crap, can you cut the shit out, for real. <laughs> it is a little much. Cut out the negativity in 2019, guys. It's a new year, get your resolutions taken care of. I hope you guys enjoy this type of content. If you did enjoy it, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Subscribe. Please subscribe. Um, hit the bell notification next to the subscribe button. I promise it's not gonna take as long for me to upload a new video as it did this go around. I had some technical difficulties with the microphone and I got a new job at Porsche, so that's why I've been absent. And, uh, fuck, I can't breathe up here. It's hard to, like, hold the, <laughs> hold the camera and try and breathe and walk around. And for those of you wondering, the Jeep did phenomenally coming up here. We are in the snow, and I just have some worn-out all-season tires, and it did just fine. So that's cool. What else? Oh, Ron, this one's for you. I see the big YouTube sticker on the back windshield of your Jeep. If you could link in the comment section below where you got it, or just let me know, that'd be great. I'd love to get one for myself. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, like, I want it to be a more like smooth flowing exit out of the video. You guys know what to do. Smash subscribe, hit the bell notification, smash the like button if that's what you're into. I can't do that. I can't do that. You can't smash it? No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> people will say I'm copying other people. But anyways, guys, all right, we're out of here. Later. Get this, in, in order to dry off, you have to roll around in the snow. You're fucking lying. No. We could dip in the... Oh my god, babe! Don't do that! Are you fucking kidding me? Fuck you, dude. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs>
Uh oh, here it comes. Here it comes. 